Good day, everyone. Welcome to today's learning section. As usual, you have been supportive to us. Don't forget, after this class, download, like, and subscribe. Welcome to the class today. Today, we are going to be working on how to name chemical compounds. How to name chemical compounds. In naming chemical compounds, you just need three things. These three values are the key to us naming chemical compounds. How to name chemical compound in 10 minutes. Number one, valency. Number two, radicals. Number three, you must know the group of the elements in periodic table. The group the element belongs to in periodic table. In our previous sections, we discussed about the first 20 elements of the periodic table, which I believe by now all of you have no. Uh, starting from hydrogen to calcium. I believe you have known. Now, we want to start naming the elements. One, valency. What is valency? Valency, this is the combining power of an element. Is the combining power of an element. This is what every element has that they use in combining with other elements to form compounds. To form compound. Either a simple compound or a complex compound. Two, radicals. Radicals are groups of elements acting as a single unit. This is a combination of elements where people are like, ah, how will I name this? But I can assure you, after this video, you should be named, naming many compounds. Number three, groups of elements in periodic table. This group of elements in periodic table works with the valency. Now, let's start with, how do we know groups of the elements in periodic table? How do we know the groups of elements in periodic table? Example, example, using sodium, sodium, sodium with symbol Na, sodium as 11 proton, which means sodium is number 11 in the periodic table. It's number 11 in the periodic table. Let's try to get the electronic configuration of sodium in shell configuration. 2, 8, 1. 2, 8, 1. Which means sodium has successfully filled shell K, L, and remaining shell M to be filled. Shell K, Shell L and N. Now, in identifying groups that element belongs to, the last number you write in the shell configuration is the group. The last number the element has is the group. So, which means you now know the group that all elements belong to. Let's see another example. Let's see chlorine. Chlorine is number 17. Everybody, can we do this together? Two, eight, seven. So which group the chlorine belongs to? Group seven. Group seven. That's good. So I didn't know that we can do that for all the 20 elements, knowing their groups. This group is what will enable us to know their valences. How do we get their valency? Just very simple. Valency, the combining power. Valency. How do we get valency? Valency. Valency. Now, let's say group. Then the valency of the elements. Valency of the elements. The group, the valency of the elements. We have eight groups in total in the periodic table. Group one, group two, three, four, five. 6, 7, and 8. Every group 1 element has valency of plus 1. Every group 2, plus 2. Group 3, plus 3. Let's come to 8. Group 8 has 0. Group 7, minus 1. Group 6, minus 2. Group 5, minus 3. Group 4, plus 4, or minus 4. Let me quickly explain. How do we get group 1 to be plus 1? Every, you agree with me that every element in group 1, we end with 1. So which means 2, 
eight one. So they will be having SX of one electron at the outermost shell, which means they will lose this electron. And you know, in chemistry, when you are losing an electron, you have a plus sign, a plus sign, a plus sign, a cation, which means you have lost an electron. So which means group two element will lose two electrons. Group three element will lose three electrons. Group four element will lose or gain. Group five will gain three electrons because there's deficiency of three to make an octet. Group seven minus one, just like that. I didn't know the valency. Let's go to the third part that we need to know. Radicals. What are radicals? Radicals are group of elements acting as single units. You have come across many radicals, but you don't know. And this has been a problem for you as a science student. This has been a problem for you as a science student. Let's quickly see. Example, NO3 minus SO4 2 minus NO3 2 minus SO4 2. How do we know their valences? How do we know their all this when you are naming a chemical compound as a single valency? As a single valency, they are. They are radicals as single valences. Let's quickly lay our hands on one or two examples on how to name chemical compound. Let's start with binary compounds. What are binary compounds from the word binary? Binary compounds are compounds that have two or they are having two elements in them. Example, SO2. CO2, H2O, they are having two elements. For example, if you want to name something like SO2, which is a binary compound, what do we do? You make the first element in the compound to be unknown, to be unknown. So we are making sulfur to be unknown here. Let's represent it with letter X plus, agree with me, oxygen, Oxygen is the eighth element, two, six. Remember, we said group six elements will be having valency of minus two. Therefore, you put the valence here, minus two, subscript two. You equate it to zero. X plus minus two, subscript two. Therefore, you say X plus minus two times two equals to minus four equals to zero. Make x the subject of the formula. Therefore, x equals to plus 4. x equals to plus 4. x equals to plus 4. So, we want to name. Which means the oxidation state of sulfur in this compound is plus 4. Oxidation state of sulfur in this compound is plus 4. Then this compound becomes sulfur. Four oxide. Take notes. Take notes. When a non-metal an anion is combining with oxygen, when a non-metal anion is combining with oxygen, it ends with IDE. Sulfur so four oxide. Your answer you get here. You put it in Roman figure, showing that it has the oxygen state of what four in this compound it has the oxygen state of four in this compound you also can try this and send me your answers in the comment section let's quickly see other compounds first let's quickly see some other compounds let's see another compounds together also let's see another compounds together let's see calcium caco3 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 we want to name this compound, we don't know. You make the central atom to be unknown. When it is three, central atom, central atom, you make the central atom to be unknown. What is the central atom here? Carbon. So we say, calcium again is number 20 elements, two, eight, eight, 
2, which means calcium is in group 2, valency of plus 2, plus carbon, which is the central atom, plus oxygen, which is in group 6, subscript 3, equals to 0. Plus 2 plus C plus minus 2 times 3 minus 6 equals to 0. Make C the subject of the formula by collecting the like types. C equals to plus 6. When minus comes to the other side, it becomes plus. When plus goes to the other side of the equal sign, it becomes minus. Therefore, C equals to plus 4. C equals to plus 4. So, naming this compound, it becomes calcium. You start naming from the cation. Calcium tetraoxocalcium trioxocarbonate 4. Calcium, how many oxygen? 3. Trioxocarbonate 4. Calcium trioxocarbonate 4. That is the name of the compound. That is the name of the compound. You can also try and lay your hands on other compounds like and name it, send your answers to me and other ones in the comment section. Let's quickly see naming of ions. Naming of ions. Naming of ions. Naming of ions. We have SO4, two minus. Example, CR2, O7 minus. Just the same way as you named your binary compound, as the same way you name your binary compound, make the first element to be unknown. X minus oxygen minus 2, then subscript 4, then you equate it to the power of the ion, which is minus 2 here. X plus minus 2 times 4 minus 8 equals to minus 2. Therefore, X equals to minus 2 plus 8. X equals to plus 6. Therefore, this compound becomes 4 oxygen, tetra Oxo-sulfate. Sulfate. What's the oxygen state here? 6. tetra oxo sulfate 6. tetra oxo sulfate 6. Since it's an ion, don't forget to add ions. tetra oxo sulfate 6 ions. So, ion. So, please don't forget to add your ion. tetra oxo sulfate 6. You can also answer all this one and send me your answers in the comment sections and other one that you have done. Then lastly, let's quickly see naming of naming of acids. 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 What is acid or what is an acid? An acid is any substance that dissolves in water to produce hydrogen ions or hydrozonium ions as the only positive ions. When you are naming acids, the scientists, by the, by the agreement, they don't mention hydrogen in naming of acids they don't mention hydrogen believing that it has dissolved so for example if you are having a compound like h2so4 how do we name it just the same way make the s the central atom make the s the central atom so h2so4 two brackets plus one plus S plus minus 2, bracket 4, equals to 0, plus 2 plus S plus minus 8, equals to 0. 
x equals to minus plus 8 minus 2, which equals to plus 6. Therefore, this compound becomes tetra oxo sulfate. Then you put the oxidation state of sulfur, sulfate 6 acid. Tetra oxo sulfate 6 acid without mentioning the hydrogen involved. This is how to name acid. I believe with this, you should know and I believe you have known how to name the compounds. Please don't forget to like our videos, subscribe and share with other people. I'll be waiting for your comments and my group, we are waiting for your answers. Thank you for today.